Not much wasting time. I'm calling our elder Andrew to come and meet us. Amen. 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 Instrumentalist, are you there? Yes. I'm going to make some noise. <laughs> My voice is not all that good, so please don't laugh at me. <laughs> Convenant keeping God. There is no one like you. listen to me if I stand here or I come to the Bible studies or prayer meetings, I always say I am more grace in the field of teaching. So every time I stand, no matter how I want to preach, the Holy Spirit will direct me to teaching. So write something down. Amen. It's for your own good. Amen. Amen. Covenant means agreement. Covenant means a league. An alliance, a treaty, an ordinance. When a man and woman they marry, they form an alliance. They form a treaty. A covenant can be made between persons, human beings, man and wife. It's a covenant. 
When the preacher must stand before you and say, do you blah, blah, blah. Yes, I do. You are making a covenant. It can also be an allegiance that you pledge. When you are Ghana, at the assembly hall, we put your hand there. How do you remember that? God, I promise on my honor to be faithful. It's okay, thank you. Don't go far. Last time my wife and I were on the way to Holland, I said, yeah, can you say that in hey, this video? Don't start. I said, I can do it. I be gone at the end, I said, hey, what was it? We forgot about them. But they are all pledges that we make. They are covenants, but we don't know. Amen. But we are not talking about human covenant or whatever covenant. We are talking today about the covenant that God has with you as an individual. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because if you come to me to borrow money and we sign an agreement, huh, I will pray for you that you don't die tomorrow. Right? Because if you die, what happens to my money? It's gone. But God's covenant, he helps you to fulfill it. Amen. Now as a matter of God, as a matter of fact, God is not only covenant establishing God. He does not just only establish covenant, but he enables you to fulfill the covenant. So God is a covenant enabling is the name one? God is a covenant enabling God. Amen. There are two types of covenants. The first one we call unconditional covenant. The other one we call conditional covenant. When we say something is based on condition, it means it is an if clause. If you come, I will talk. What about if you don't come? Will I talk? So that means the covenant is not who say where the size is from two parties. Amen. But unconditional one, no matter what you do, it is there. Like God loves you. Whether you like it or not, God loves you. Amen. Yeah. Now, when you talk about the conditional covenants, God established this with the Israelites for the desert. And then he established what we call the Ten Commandments as the basic of this covenant. <coughs> Number one, thou shalt not have any other God before me. If you obey this, me, the God, I will be your God. Amen. What about if you don't obey? That means there is an if. So God listed these Ten Commandments on the tablets. And let Moses present it to them. God intentionally wanted to write these commandments on their hearts. So when we read Exodus chapter uh, 19, the, the people said, they said, and said, oh God, we will do it. What have the people done? They have promised to God that they will do it. But they failed God. So any covenant that you as a human being, you take a promise on yourself that I will do, and you don't do, that is your working your covenant. Amen? We understand up to this point, we said that it is conditional. So if you do this, I will do that. If you obey me, I will bless you. If you disobey me, I will talk to me. If you obey me, I will bless you. If you don't obey me, I will I will curse you. Good. So the if covenant is very dangerous. All of us, we have a part to play. We come here, we make announcement. We begin on Wednesday evening, we will be on a, a Friday evening, we all shout, Amen. Not Amen that you say, you know what you have done? You have confirmed that. You have confirmed that. God bless. When you talk, God will bless you. You have confirmed the covenant. But lo and behold, we come here on Wednesday. The same faces will be here. What have you done to the covenant? You have broken the covenant. What will God do to you? What will he do? It is in the Bible. It's not my way though. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but glory be to God. Amen. And we have the unconditional one. That one is unilateral covenant and the sovereign God acts whereby he unconditionally obligates himself to bring everything to pass. This covenant is characterized by I will. For example, when he brought Noah out of the ark, he said, Noah, because of this offering, uh, the offering that you have made out to me today, it's really very nice. I will no more destroy the earth. And as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter and summer will never ever cease. 
So you can fast and pray for 24 hours. Winter will never change you somehow. Winter is coming if you like begin today to fast. Until February come next year. Will the winter change? No. No matter what you do, you can never change that principle. Period. It's God's covenant with man. And it's unconditional. Amen. So it's up to you and I to know where we belong. He made another covenant also with Adam. He said, Adam, be fruitful and multiply. Subdue the earth and have dominion. Amen. Amen. Last time I was wondering about certain things in life that I've been praying about, I don't see answers. And any time I pray, God directs me to only one specific point in the Bible. Genesis 126. Have dominion. Have dominion. I said, ah. I started looking for books and then going to the internet to check for information and stuff and stuff. And I came along a man who teaches only pastors and uh, apostles and uh, those people who have their churches. His job is only to train these people. I came in contact and I was learning things from him. I said, wow, what a revelation. So anytime that you want God to do something for you, you ponder about it, you bring it to him, you direct your path because of one thing, the covenant. But he doesn't want you to break the covenant at all. Amen? Amen. So he made a covenant with Adam and said, Adam, be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue the earth and have dominion. Once upon a time, here we are having Bible studies, and the normal question came, and the question was, when God said, be fruitful and multiply, my dear sister, the next time we talk about it, he said, give birth. Give birth. Clap for the sister. Because he understands his her portion of the covenant. Amen. Amen. We continue. He was to made another one with Abraham. Unconditional. He said, Abraham, I will bless you. Anyone who cares you, I will curse you. I will make your descendants to become like son of the seashore. You cannot even count them. Amen. It's unconditional. My question to you this morning is, what kind of a covenant do you have with your God? What kind of covenant do you have with your God? The old covenant was an agreement between God and Israel. And he wrote all these things on the tablet, as I said. Right now, where are those tablets that God wrote the instructions on? Can we find them? We can't find them, no way. And the Bible said, because the people promised that we will obey, they couldn't, so they destroyed the covenant. And God says something, take your Bibles now with me. We are going to the book of Hebrews, now we are going to read. God wanted us to know that Hebrews chapter 8, if you are there. He wanted us to know that no matter what happens, He is a God who never changes. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. No matter what happens in the years to years, He still has plans for you. And nobody can change God's plan concerning your life. No one. So if you are there as a human being, never let what anybody do Never let what anybody say. Never let what everybody let somebody think about you. Even think about your own self. No. Never do that. Otherwise, make a mistake. Because God has covenant with every individual. Amen. 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 I remember when I was in prison, I had a dream. I saw a very big cow. People were chasing the cow, and the cow fell into a big hole. And they begin to stone. The two things at the cow, sticks and stones and sand. And I said, oh, they are killing the, um, the animal. I heard a voice saying, be silent and watch. So all I, I saw was that the cow has stood like this in the, in the hole. And it was shaking itself. So next time they threw the stones at it, it fell and it stops on those things. And gradually, gradually, the whole hole was filled up with the thing that people were throwing at the, um, the, the cow. And the cow came at the surface and began to walk. I said, wow, I woke up. So at the shower, I was thinking about it. God said, it is you. You are the cow. Right now, you are in the prison, you are in the hole. The thing that are happening outside, they are the thing they are throwing at you. But if you don't stay down there, for those things they are throwing at you to cover you, I got I will need to act like the cow you saw. Last Sunday, my wife and I we were at a program in Holland. I was sat in the congregation when I entered, and a man came and said, Please come, go and sit among the pastors. I said, No, no, let me sit. He said, No, 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 you don't belong here. You belong there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he took my hand like this and brought me there. 
some brief men there and me sitting there. Wow, what an honor. What am I trying to say? The covenant. He picked me from the grass and now to the grace. From the prison to the platform. Who am I? But I remember one thing, the covenant. If I had let the things that people tell me, people did when I was in prison, it would have crumbled me back to where I belong. But I said, no, I remember the cow in the dream. Maybe you are like that. Things you hear, things that people will do to you, how people will even think about you, they are the stones they are throwing at you. But if you don't give up, and you remember the covenant, you will shake those things off, and you come and stand on top of it, and you move on, and God will bring you into this thing. Amen. Amen. Let's read Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8 to 10. If you are there, please read with me. King James, please. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For finding fault with him, mm -hmm. he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judea, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them, I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Because they continue not in my covenant, mm -hmm. but I regarded them mm -hmm. not, not, fair the Lord. Mm -hmm. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. After those days, says the Lord, mm -hmm. I will put my laws mm -hmm. into their mind mm -hmm. and write them in their hearts. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, finding fault with them. Who are the, what, what is the word them referring to? Those Israelites on the desert. Who respond and say, Lord, we promise you, we will do everything that you said on the, on, the, on the Ten Commandments. They failed, they couldn't. So go therefore find fault with them. And the whole covenant was.